Hey guys, today I'm going to be teaching you how to manipulate data using Python and Pandas uh, in order to turn a SurveyMonkey dataset, which comes out in this uh, very wide format, into a long format. That way you can take the data and you can visualize it inside tools like Power BI and Tableau more easily. Uh, so let's get right into it. So the reason we're making this video over here, or the reason I'm making this video is um, uh, so I'm, I'm a data analyst, and I uh, also do some independent consulting on the side. And I had a client come up to me one day and ask me to um, visualize some data in Tableau. And one thing that I think is important to understand is that uh, when you work as a data analyst, or even if you work as a data scientist or anything, you're going to spend a lot of time uh, trying to just get data into a format where you can actually use it. And so I think that um, if you're starting your data analyst or data science journey, uh, it is really important to build these skills up. And this is a very useful skill that you can um, you know, easily sell on websites like uh, Upwork or Freelancer or even just to you know, friends and family that you know. Um, basically, whenever uh, Excel is no longer an option. So um, I took the, uh, the uh, format I got from my client and I you know, scrubbed it clean. There's no identifying information over here. Um, so you know, of course, you'll see that the questions over here are just uh, you know, question one, question two, question three. So um, let's do what any good analyst should do first and start trying to understand the data. So what they wanted, um, the format that the client or the format that we need um, in order to put it into Tableau is something like this. So we need um, an ID column. We will need uh, just some demographic information. Uh, and there are a couple of columns um, related to just that. So it'll be like that. And then we want a column, whoops, that just says question in it and it has the um, question that we're asking. We then want something called question plus sub question and then answer and then uh, total respondents and then total respondents or total um, call it the same answer. So at the end of the day, we want to transform, um, let's see, let's call this desired format. We want to transform this sheet over here into something like this over here. So let's go through it step by step. Um, ID, that will correlate to this respondent ID column over here. Um, Demographic info. So there are, are a couple of columns for demographic info. Um, we have, uh, of course, this has been scrubbed out. We won't be needing start date, end date, but things like what division do you work in? Um, which of the following best describes your position level? Um, gender you identify as? Uh, what we can call tenure? Um, what is your employment type? So these are all questions that uh, identify the demographics of the individual which is very useful for um, a, uh, any surveys in order to like find larger patterns in our data set. So we're gonna wanna keep those as our demographic columns, so we don't wanna transform those. Those should stay exactly as they are. Um, then you have the question columns over here, and this is where the interesting stuff happens. So you'll see we have questions, and they're written in this what we call a wide format or a pivoted format. And what we wanna do is we wanna take the, those questions and unpivot them. So you know, kind of take them from this wide format and then uh, turn them into a long format. And what that'll do is, um, let's take respondent ID over here. Uh, so if we call this respondent ID, you know, respondent ID two for the last number over there, um, their, their ID will be duplicated um, for every single question there is, because as we take it, we have to correlate uh, each of their, um, uh, their answers with a question. And so it'll turn this, uh, what I believe is a 200 row sheet uh, into something like 17,000 rows. Um, and that's exactly what we want. Uh, computers are much better at handling rows, uh, I mean, uh, data of significant length than significant width. Um, although as humans, we generally prefer to look at things with significant width. Uh, it's easier to just read across than to read up and down. So these questions are what we're gonna wanna tra uh, uh, transpose is another word uh, you can use. Um, and you can see there's an interesting pattern we have over here. We actually have two header uh, rows. What we have, uh, what I'll call like the primary header, where it's like question five. But underneath question five, it looks like they could have put in five, six different responses. 
So we're going to have to deal with that somehow. We're going to have to change that into just a, um, a single response column. And that's why, if you'll notice over here, I did a question plus sub-question. We're going to call this second row over here the sub-question. So as you can see, you know, just going across, everything else is the same. I believe this is like about 100 column or 100, yeah, 100 columns, something like that. So, um, or something close to that. So um, that is what we will be transforming today. Um, and I just want to reiterate, you know, this isn't just some random exercise we're doing. Uh, I was actually paid by a client in order to do this, and you totally can be too. It's, uh, um, it, it is a relatively easy skill to pick up, and it pays pretty well. So let us get started. Um, I'm going to be doing this in Python, but uh, we would benefit from preparing some of our data in Excel first and then moving to Python. So uh, as a best practice, we have this is the raw data here. Um, if we're going to make any changes, we'll want to save that as a new file. So let's go to Save As. We'll call it that. Uh, and this is so that when uh, we inevitably make mistakes at some point in our career, um, we can always just roll back to the oldest version of, of our data. So we have uh, what I'll call the raw data over here, the desired format. Um, and what we first need to do is we need to collapse this second row, the second header over here, into its first row. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to concatenate, uh, which means to stick together, um, the first row and anything uh, on the second row if there is anything. So let us create a new sheet. And we'll call this the question. And also, um, because we're going to be bringing this into Python, you usually want to use underscores instead of just spaces. Um, that's just good practice, honestly. So let's select this first row over here. So we just press it over there, copy, and then paste special transpose. Um, and on Windows, uh, it'll look different. It'll be like two arrows at a right angle. So like, kind of like that. Um, that's how you transpose data. All right. And then let's insert a row over here and name it question. And then let us do the same thing over here. Control C or Command C on a Mac. Paste special transpose. And then we'll call this the sub question. And actually, I'm going to call it the raw question and the raw sub question. And you'll see why in a minute. Okay. Um, so you'll see for a lot of these, you know, for response ID there, you know, there, it's just a single question. There's only one response ID you can give. Um, start date, end date, you know, email address, all that stuff. Um, that's fairly simple. So it a question like this is an interesting one. When asked what division you work in, you could either say, uh, you could either give a response, which I'm guessing is like just the standard response. They had like a multiple choice. Um, or if you selected other, then you can type something in and then we want to know what that person said when they said other. So you'll see that, uh, you know, questions like question 25, there were like nine different responses they could have given. Um, so let us get started in concatenating these two together. Um, that way we can collapse these two rows into just one row. Okay. So what I'm going to do over here is I first need to fill in um, all these blanks over here with the question above it. So let us call this question. And then we will say, uh, I want it to equal this as long as it's not a blank. So if, uh, let's see, this is not blank, oh, whoops, is not blank. So um, uh, exclamation mark equals means is not. And then um, the two quotation marks uh, means that uh, here's a string, here's some text, and I put nothing inside it. So, you know, if it's blank. So if it is not blank, value if true. And this, you know, great thing about Excel, just tells you what you need. Uh, I wanted to take that one. And if it's false, uh, I wanted to take the value above it, which you would think would be this one, right? Um, so let's try that and we'll see what happens. And the only corrections I forgot to add in a parentheses. All right, looks good. Now let's just double tap over here. 
interesting. So it looks like we got some zeros over there, uh, which means basically that it just didn't find any values. Um, and you'll see why. So when we go to question five, for example, for this row over here, row 21, if this is not blank, which it's not, we're just going to use this value over here. Okay, sounds good. Works well. Question five, or sorry, uh, row 22. If this is not blank, it is blank. Uh, so we're not going to pull this value. We're going to pull the value above it. Okay, sounds good. Then we get to the third row over here, row 23, 24, sorry. Or uh, sorry, yeah, 23. If this is not blank, it is blank. Take the value above it. There's nothing there. So how do we fix this? Well, instead of telling it to take the value up here, I'm going to tell it to I'm going to tell it to take the value over here. So we'll take it from A1 to C1. And you see that fixes our problem right there. So now question five repeats every single um, row. And uh, the reason we needed to do this is uh, that way when we can concatenate the two um, uh, columns, both the question and the sub-question, um, Excel will actually have something to concatenate. And remember, concatenate just means to like literally just stick together like that. Um, so for example, you know, if you were to do one plus one is two, but one concatenated to one is 11, you know? So we're going to do the same thing with the, with the, uh, uh, raw sub question. So literally all I can do is just do that. Oh, and, and we'll address this in a minute. Awesome. And we'll call this sub question. Okay, cool. Um, and just because these are this is demographic data, um, I could change the formula, the Excel formula, to make it more robust and to and to work better with um, uh, like a more robust set of data. But we just want to go with the simplest solution. So for these over here, I will just say they're blank. Okay, looks good. Looks good. Perfect. So now. We're going to have a column called question plus sub question. And this equals, uh, well, wait, equals concat. Um, and if someone could explain this to me, I actually don't know. What's the difference between concat and concatenate? Um, I'm guessing it's some like a legacy Excel feature or something. Uh, but we're going to concatenate this a uh, dash, and that's why I'm adding these parentheses around, or these quotation marks around it, and that. All right. And for these over here, I just want to copy this, honestly. Again, because this is a static data set and we're not like going into a database or something and pulling out a bunch of data, um, it's okay to just do these like one-off solutions um, that you probably normally wouldn't do otherwise. Okay, looks really good. Um, so now we, when we have the header um, across our raw data set, instead of having question 24, blank, 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 uh, like you see over here, question 24, blank, 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 we will now have question 24, response one, response two, response three, response four, response five. Awesome. Um, so let us go ahead and get this situated. So what I have to do, uh, actually, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new sheet, call it edited uh, underscore data. Uh, and I know everyone was expecting a Python tutorial. We'll get to there. Uh, what I really wanted to do is I wanted to show people what it is really like to be a data analyst. Um, you're not coding all the time. Uh, sometimes you have to find the best solution to a problem, which is not always coding up everything. Um, coding is great when you want to have a replicable solution. Um, so for example, if I was to do this over and over and over again, then I would do this in coding um, because it's replicable uh, or it would be more replicable. Or if um, the logic of something is uh, simple enough to you know, code up, sometimes uh, it's just easier to do things manually. So that's why we're starting off in Excel, but we'll get to the coding in a minute. All right. So I just copied and pasted all the data. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the question 
and I'm going to take, um, so these are all formulas right now actually, so I need to copy this, and so I hit Command C, now Command V, uh, Control if you're on Windows, um, values only, because Excel won't let me transpose a formula, um, at least, or if it does, I don't know how to do it. Um, and, and that's another thing. Um, if someone, if anyone has any uh, critiques or suggestions about like just the process I followed in this video, please leave them in the comments below. Um, I'm always improving, and I'm always looking forward to uh, learning better ways to go about my uh, analysis. Let's transpose it. All right. So now we have respondent ID, start date, end date, email address. So we're gonna we're gonna be dropping these columns. Um, division, other, cool, awesome. So this is great. This is going to work really well for our data manipulation. All right. Cool. So let us go over here. I think, I think we're ready. Um, yeah, I only want this column and this column. I won't need those. Okay, cool. So, Command S, Control S, let's save our work, uh, and exit. So, we now have SurveyMonkey output edited. Let us get into the exciting part. Open up your code editor, uh, and I'll probably make a video in the future um, on how I set up my uh, environment and what I believe to be uh, the ideal setup for a um, at least a beginner Python or a beginner data anal uh, analyst environment. Um, as a data analyst, I spend the majority of my time in pandas. Um, it, like while I'm in Python, it's almost entirely pandas because um, I work with a lot of um, relational data. What do they call it? Sorry, structured data. That's that was the term. So let us open up a new workspace. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Command up. Survey Monkey tutorial open all right cool and we're going to be using something called ipython uh notebooks and these are basically so another word for them is jupyter notebooks you've probably heard that term used before and the great thing about these is that they have code cells that let you run your code step by step um they're missing some other features uh from uh Py from python in visual studio code um, but I find that just the ability to run codes in cells very easily is uh, the reason I prefer to use them. That being said, you can run um, code in cells in a regular Python script in Visual Studio Code. Um, and that is definitely something I want to start trying. Um, but for now, that's not what we're doing. So uh, I just use Visual Studio Code. And, you know, in the future, I'll probably make a video as to why I prefer it. I've used PyCharm before. I've used Spider. Um, I like Visual Studio Code, though. So we'll open up a new file. And let's call this data or you know what let's do it this way so i'll show you my generalized format for naming files awesome so um when you become a data analyst uh, more so than a lot of professions uh you will live and die by your organization it is really really easy to mess up stuff if you're not organized uh, and i've learned that lesson the hard way so the naming of your files is really important. And so let us do that here. So by adding these prefixes uh, on a much bigger project, when I come into this folder, I'll be able to easily tell, okay, what is what? Um, you know, an Excel file not, isn't always necessarily data because sometimes I use Excel for like uh, parameters and arguments um, just as an easy way to like, you know, write them out manually and have Python ingest them. And then I call these uh, scripts, you know, because this is just the um, uh, Python script we're writing in order to manipulate our data. And another reason I like to number them is because oftentimes I will do an analysis for, uh, an analysis for someone. They'll say it's a one-off analysis. And then they come back months later saying, hey, I need this thing done again. Um, so by doing it this way, months later, when I, uh, you know, have completely forgotten about it, and, you know, it, it's a small enough project where I don't bother documenting it, um, it is easy for me to look at the script step by step and just be like, okay, like I just run this, then this, then this, then this. Um, so, although it seems very minor, just naming your files a you know easy to use format will uh, is a great way to stay uh, stay productive. 
All right, so let's get right into it. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to import uh, pandas. So pandas is it stands for panel data, and it is the standard uh, Python library for data frame manipulation. Um, so I just started learning R, and I actually found out that apparently R just does this like natively. Uh, but Python is a general purpose programming language, and so it has a lot of uh, or a lot of its uh, um, data science features and data analyst features actually come uh, as part of other libraries. So import pandas, and then the standard practice is to just call it PD. So we're going to import pandas. We're going to call PD. That way, whenever I want to use a, a method from pandas um, or a, a functionality of pandas, basically, I don't have to keep writing pandas dot. You know, I can write in PD dot. And something else I like to do is I, I like to say import OS. Um, I always import OS, uh, and you'll see why in a second. Okay, so uh, I hit shift enter and that uh, uh, ran that code cell. And it looks like everything ran as expected. Oh, I am using the wrong environment. So environment management can be one of the more annoying parts of, cool, it worked perfect, uh, of programming. So just wanna make sure that worked. Cool. Um, but it's very important that you have organized environments. And I'll make a video in the future about how I decide to organize my environments. I have one called Minimal DS, Minimal Data Science. Um, and it just has like Pandas, Scikit-Learn, NumPy, just like the like base um, uh, things you need for any data science project. And um, whenever I need to do a specialized project, I'll make a new environment for it. And then I'll add stuff to it. Um, and that's just to make sure that uh, I don't dump a bunch of libraries into one uh, project or into one environment and have compatibility issues in the future. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to always put in that uh, line of code whenever I start anything. And that means, uh, so PWD stands for Present Working Directory. Um, I believe it's Windows speak. Um, I forgot where I learned it from. Uh, equals OS. So that's this library over here. We're referencing this OS dot. Um, the dot means let's go like find a method. So go find something inside um, inside OS. Um, get CWD, which means current working directory. Uh, and then the print, we have the parentheses over here. So what this does is that this will take the directory that I'm in, basically the folder. Directory just means folder. The folder that I am currently in, um, and it will it'll make that uh, string that text. Um, the present working directory or sorry it'll, it'll assign that to the variable present working directory and the reason i do this is because um this makes it very easy for when i like move files around um whenever uh yeah whenever i move files around and the code might still think it's in an older directory this just makes sure that like everything i uh reference will go and grab the file from the appropriate directory um and when we go a little bit further along i'll, I'll, I'll explain it a little bit better so we did that. Uh, now, first thing we need to do, we need to import data set. So data set equals uh, PD uh, pandas dot, uh, let's see, read underscore Excel. Um, and then the first argument we need to put in here is the uh, file path. Where is the file we're trying to import? So present working directory plus, um, I believe we called it data, yeah, survey monkey output edited. So I'm gonna right click that rename command a command c and then put it in quotation marks and just paste it there um oh and we're going to want to also put a slash over here if you're using windows uh you're going to need to put in a, a double backslash um just because of the way windows handles uh, uh file file names so uh, as a mac user i will just put in a slash or if you're a linux user you know i'm, I'm sure you know that already um and then I would just type in data set over here, shift enter. Awesome, so it looks like we brought in, okay, so yeah, it looks like we brought in the first sheet. So I didn't specify a sheet name, so it just brought in the first one. So let us go specify a sheet name with the sheet name uh, argument. So sheet name equals, um, what was it, let's see. Oh, we renamed it, um, file open. Edited data.
There we go. And then let's try that again. And my mistake, so sheet name should actually be separated by an underscore. Awesome. Looks good. So this is exactly what we had earlier. Respondent ID, da 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 da. Yep, 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 yep. Awesome. So you'll see the cool thing with uh, IPython notebooks is that you can just put in, or, or Jupyter notebooks, you can just like type in data set. Like I don't have to type in print or anything, and it'll just show me a preview of the data along with how many rows are inside it. This is, um, I don't believe the head um, method does that for you. Um, let's try it out. So data set dot, this is generally how you're taught how to look at the top couple of rows. Yeah, it only says how many rows it brought in. Um, so that's one reason I like to just do it like this. It tells me how many rows um, are in the entire data set. And it's important that we um, know we brought in all of the data. So 198 rows, that's accurate. That's what we're looking for. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get a look at all of the columns. So we're going to type in data set um, dot columns and actually before this let me try it let me let me let me let's do something else so data set underscore modified equals data set dot copy and the reason we do this the reason we do the dot copy over here is that sometimes you're going to be bringing in um a very large file so like by large i mean literally something like 50 megabytes or something that can be uh it can take a while to bring that in um depending on your computer and a bunch of other factors and what happens is as we modify the data set, we're gonna be changing stuff and occasionally you might make a mistake and you need to roll back a change. Um, importing the data again can take a long time and uh, can get really annoying as you're iterating through your code. So what I like to do is I like to import the data and then I take a copy of it. And by taking a copy of it, I can always roll back to just taking another copy of it if I mess up this over here. Um, so data set, data set modified equals, we're assigning it to data set dot copy and it looks good. And so we're gonna do all of our changes over here. That way we don't um, accidentally, uh, or, or when we, if we make a mistake, we can always just roll back the change. So I wanna see what columns are here. So data set underscore modified um, and then dot columns gives us a list of our columns. Perfect. Um, and the reason I want to do this is because there are a couple of columns we wanted to drop, if you remember uh, me mentioning it earlier. Um, and the columns we want to drop, um, we I would rather get rid of them sooner rather than later because the less data is flowing through our program and our script, the uh, faster everything will work. So let us try and get rid of us. We generally want to get rid of as much data as early as possible in the process. So I know we don't want start date, end date, email address, first name, last name, or custom data one. Yeah, we don't want any of those um, any of those columns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. And there are multiple ways to go about this. This is just one way. Copy. And then just paste it like that. And we're going to turn this into a list. Um, so a list is just a Python iterator. Uh, an iterator is literally something you can like iterate through. Um, so it, it's like a collection of variables is, is the best way to describe an iterator. And these are incredibly useful um, for all kinds of uh, uh, all kinds of things in, uh, in uh, when manipulating data. So we'll say columns to drop equals. I like to just check it out. And that's how we created a list. So basically what this is is, the variable columns to drop is a list of columns we want to drop. And I'll show you how we drop them in a minute. So let us do dataset underscore modified. Looks like my code career or code completion isn't working. So dataset underscore modified equals itself dot drop. Um, and I want to drop columns equals this list over here because I wanted to drop these columns. Um, and the reason I can't write out the columns like this, so for example, like if you only wanted to drop one column, you could just do that. Uh, so, you know, logically you would think if I want to drop multiple columns then I should just be able to paste all of these in here, right? 
Uh, and the reason you can't do that is because what Python is going to do is it's going to think that each of these is a new argument in the drop function or the drop method. Um, and that's not what we're doing over here. So that's why you need to provide it a list. A list is a single object that it'll look inside and then decide what to drop off. Oh, whoops, uh, dot drop. Columns to drop. All right. And as you can see, we have now dropped all of those columns. So we've gone from 100 columns to 94 columns, meaning we, we removed six, which is exactly what we're looking for. Perfect, perfect. Um, so we have finished the first step over here. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to, now we're going to want to unpivot this data. Uh, there are multiple terms for this, unpivoting, melting, making long. Uh, that's what we're gonna wanna do. And the way we do that is we will use something called the melt method. So we're gonna be using something called the melt method. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll take data set modified. So we'll do uh, data set underscore modified equals, um, and I believe it's pd.melt. And I forgot the uh, exact arguments that I'm gonna be using, and it looks like my code completion is not working as expected. So this will be a great chance to demonstrate how Actually, you know what, let's do it this way. This will be a great way to demonstrate exactly how um, I, I look up stuff whenever I forget it. Uh, pandas documentation. Um, and one thing important thing to remember is that uh, almost no one actually remembers how all this stuff works all the time. Um, only The only thing stuff I remember is like stuff I use all the time. Um, and I don't use a melt function all the time, so or the melt method all the time. So uh, it's perfectly okay to look up documentation. And what really makes a good um, uh, programmer or analyst, um, uh, my friends tell me, is I have a couple of friends that work in uh, development, uh, oftentimes it's just the ability to know what to look up where and how to quickly look it up. So with Pandas, a great thing is that um, recently, I think in the last year or so, they changed their documentation and they finally went to version 1.0. Um, and now they're at version 1.2.1. And the documentation is tremendous now. So. I went to uh, Google, just typed in pandas documentation, clicked on the first link, and then over here, I want the melt function. So pandas.dataframe.melt or pd.melt, either one works. So this is what we're gonna be using. And um, that those are the arguments we'll be using. So it looks like I actually wrote something incorrectly. I put pd.melt when really what uh, I should be doing is it says, pandas.dataframe.melt. Um, the data frame refers to the data frame we're looking at. So uh, data set underscore modified dot melt. Um, ID vars, so ID variables, value variables, uh, variable name, value name. Okay, cool. Um, and columns to use as the identifier variables. In our uh, example, this will be the demographic data. This, the, the demographic data is what we're gonna be using as our identifier variable. So that, that's the stuff we do not want to pivot. So let's go ahead and uh, identify those first. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna wanna get those columns again. So data set underscore modified uh, dot columns. And uh, because we're going to be talking about a lot of columns, I'm actually going to be using, um, I'm going to be creating lists out of this and slicing those lists. Um, that way we don't have to type out everything or copy and paste like massive walls of text uh, because we have 94 columns we have to deal with now. So, okay, so it looks like we want the ID variables, the demographic var variables to be the uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth column. So the first eight columns, we want those to be the uh, demographic variables. Uh, and I can tell the, that the, they're separated because um, you'll see uh, apostrophe, apostrophe, and then this comma over here is what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for a comma in between two of these apostrophes, and that's how I know um, 
that, that that's an item in the list. So let us do the first eight items. And you know what? This looks a little bit ugly, so I'm going to actually turn this into a list. It's uh, it's actually an index right now, and what I want is I want a list. Um, great thing about Python, just you know, surround dataset.modified columns with list, and you get a list. And you'll see that's a little bit cleaner. I just prefer it to look that way. Yeah, one line per value, simple, easy to look at. Just to make sure, let's put in a nine over there, and it looks like we get question one. So let me explain what we're doing over here. Uh, we created a list, and um, as you can see, this is what the list actually looks like. Now, if I want to get a specific item in that list, um, in this case, I want to get like the first couple of columns. Uh, if I want to get the first column right, then I use brackets, and I'll type in zero, because Python does zero-based indexing. It starts off at zero and indexes from there. I get responded ID. Makes sense. Uh, if I want the first and second item, then I can do that. Oh, sorry. Uh, I have to do it this way. Uh, I have to use a, uh, I believe it's called a colon, right? Yeah, it's a colon. Um, is it a colon? No, this is something else. I, I completely forgot what it's called. Um, but th 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 this uh, uh, sign over here is what we want to use. And you'll see when I do zero, this, two, it gives us the first two. Um, items in the in the list um, so it'll include your first index and it'll go up uh, until right before the last index in your in your list so if I want the first eight items I go zero to eight and we get the first eight columns um, and the reason we want to do it this way versus the way we did it over here where we just like name the columns is because uh, I also need to specify these questions over here, and there's like 90 of them. Um, so I don't want to have a wall of text of 90 different rows, and I'd much rather do it this way, which is a lot cleaner. So what we're going to say is we're going to call this ID variables equals that. Um, and then we're going to come down here. So we'll run that. Dataset modified equals dataset modified dot melt. And the first argument is ID underscore variables equals ID underscore variables. Awesome. Um, so that's what, that's the first part. Now value variables. So the value variables are basically uh, what do you want to melt? What do you want to unpivot? Um, and that will be all of the questions. So we want to take all of those questions and all of the answers underneath those questions and then unpivot them or melt them. So let us do the exact opposite. Um, we're going to call this value underscore variables equals the same thing as this. except it's every uh, every column that is not, that is basically passed. Uh, that is the eighth uh, column onwards. So in that case, I'll just put in an eight and a blank over here. So it mean, when you have a blank, it just means go until the end. Um, so for example, I could also write this that way. And it would mean go from you know the first item, the zeroth item, all the way to the eighth item. Uh, and then let us take a look at what that looks like. Looks good. Question one response, question two response. Awesome, 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 awesome. All the way to the end. That's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, and, and you can see why I didn't want to paste this. So, I mean, I, I could take this and I could paste it here. Um, but it would make my code very long and ungainly. And um, there is a heavy importance that should be placed on clean, good-looking code because uh, it is, especially when you're in, in a workplace and you're sharing code with people, um, it, you are doing a service to yourself and everyone else to make sure that your code is easy to read. Um, that way uh, you explain it to people less and they're able to understand it faster. So uh, I'm going to do command sh or command uh, slash, um, control slash, just to get rid of that, uh, comment out that line. And then we'll do value underscore vars equals 
value of ours. Oh, and uh, one thing I might want to change over here. Um, I'm going to change this to say data set melted because if I kept that as data set modified, if I kept that as data set modified, when I do change it, uh, or when I, when I do like like run that uh, that line of code, then it'll change data set modified to equal that. And if I was to run it again, it would try and unpivot data that's already been unpivoted. So like I can't run the code multiple times. So whenever you're about to make a change that you might want to uh, uh, reverse or try again a couple of times, just assign it to a new object or a new variable. And let's take a look at it. So. As you can see over here, we're looking for, we have 17,028 rows um, and 10 columns. So we have made the data wide and then turned it to long. And we're gonna do a couple of other transformations that we needed to do, um, but this is the bulk of the work right here. This is, this is where, th this is the kind of stuff that um, pandas and Python or R let you do very easily that were, are otherwise like, it, it's really, really difficult to do this in Excel. Um, you might be able to use Visual Basic uh, or, or VBA. I don't know how to use VBA, um, but you know, I mean, it's easy enough to do in Python. We we did it in you know a few lines of code. Respondent ID, all the demographic questions. As you notice, these have not been pivoted or unpivoted. These these stayed the exact same. Variable, that is the question plus sub question, and then value is the answer. So, looks like we got exactly what we needed. Um, now that being said. I want to rename this variable and this value column. And luckily, the melt method actually provides a uh, argument for that: value name and var name. So var name and then value name. So I want this variable name to be question. And you know it's probably not best practice to like use use a plus sign in a column name, but you know it is what it is. Answer, and if I run that again, you'll see question plus sub question answer. And remember how earlier I said I wanted to assign this as a um, as a separate variable. Uh, here's what would have happened had I not done that. Okay, so I ran it, right? Oh, but if I wanted to change something, so I wanted to change this to you know F for whatever reason, it errors out because now it's trying to reference data modified, which I had already manipulated and changed. So we don't want to do that. Whenever you do like a major uh, a major change to your data set, I I personally just change the um, the uh, I, I add a new variable. Um, that can create its own problems um, with just like storing way too many variables or um, it, it, it can be difficult to have like good variable names after a while. Um, but in this case, we'll be we'll be just fine. All right, so 17,028 rows, 10 columns, question plus sub question and answer. So here's a bulk of the work. Now there's a couple of other things that we need to do. Uh, if you remember, we need, the, uh, the client also wanted to know how many people responded per question and uh, how many people responded with the same answer. Plus, they wanted to know what the original question was. So what I have is I have question plus sub question, but they wanted to know just what the original question was too. So those are three different things that'll teach us um, uh, two major skills that we can use whenever you're manipulating data. Um, one is joining, doing joint, and the other is going to be um, uh, aggregating data. So let's go ahead and add the question column first. Um, that'll teach you a join. Uh, and a join is uh, one of the most uh, important and fundamental skills as a that you have as a data analyst. And it is also one of the easiest things to mess up. Um, and I'll show you why. So I have this question um, this uh, uh, question sheet over here. And and uh, for those of you to, that don't know, a join is basically just taking uh, uh, two sets of data uh, where you have like columns like this and kind of just sticking them next to each other. Um, and you can do all kinds of joins. You can like, you know, literally just stick them like this next to each other where you're just like, you know, combining row by row. Or you can say, for example, uh, whenever you see respondent ID, use that. Whenever you see question four, use that. Um, so there are all kinds of ways that you can, uh, that you can combine your data. Um, 
and a join is one of the most important ones that we will use current uh, use right now. So let us do that first. So what we need to do, we need to import the data set, um, the uh, Excel file again, because what happens is when Panda imports an Excel file, um, it's only importing that one sheet. Um, you can import an entire file, but uh, or an entire workbook, but that's not what we did. We imported a sheet. So let us go ahead and uh, import a uh, that question sheet. So how do we import stuff? Uh, we'll call it questions equals pandas pd dot read underscore excel present working directory. So we need to get to the, the file path. There we go. And then sheet underscore name equals, I believe it was questions. And then file not found error. So that probably means I, oh, uh, I didn't add a slash over here. And then key error. So file not found error means it literally couldn't find the file um, because I didn't add a, I didn't add a slash over here. Um, and then questions equals, or sorry, questions. Uh, yeah, the worksheet doesn't exist. So it was probably called question, not questions. There we go. Awesome. And the only thing we need here, we only need question and question plus sub question. So let's go ahead and drop those other columns we don't need. So we're going to do the same thing. Um, in fact, actually an easier thing we could do is we can call that questions import. And then we can say questions equals questions underscore import dot copy. Remember, we got to make a copy of it. Um, and then questions. Uh, remember how we did it earlier? I think it was over here. We're going to do it slightly differently this time. I'll just show you another way to do it. Questions dot drop um, columns uh, equals, and I want to drop a list of columns. And again, since we're using a, you know, it, we're just going to be dropping three columns. I'm just going to put them in like this. Now you'll notice that they're not orange text. Uh, that's only, that's because I haven't turned them into strings yet. So we have to make sure we use those. And, um, you know, th this is uh, this is the exact same method I followed when uh, last week I was manipulating this data. This is just, you know, um, you'll find your own flow and how you like to do things. Uh, but this is exactly what I did. So it looks like we dropped those columns. So let's take a look at the data one more time. Oh no, it looks like the columns are still there. So what happened over here is the dot drop method, what it does is it creates a new copy of your uh, data frame. Um, and so literally all we did is we just said, make a copy of this. But because we didn't assign it to anything, um, you know, the copy doesn't exist anymore. After it's created, it's gone. Um, so that's why up here, we um, said dataset.drop. So this is a copy and we assigned this copy to dataset modified. Another method you can use whenever you run into the, to these types of problems, and, and you'll notice this sometimes where like you'll try a method and like it doesn't seem that the change is actually stuck. Um, usually what you need is something called the in place argument. So in place equals true. And you'll see the change stuck over there. So uh, in place basically means like, uh, like, like perform this operator in place, perform this operator right now on the data. All right. So question plus sub question, questions, question drop. Cool. Um, oh, it looks like we brought in 16,000 rows of data. Um, I will be honest. I don't actually know why I did that, but I know for sure we did not have 16,000 rows of data. It looks like we have a lot of these NANs, not a number. Um, so let's just get rid of them because we don't need them. So we will do, uh, let's see, the method is questions dot drop NA. Um, and I think I can just do that. Perfect. Now here's another instance where we have to do in place. Uh, so before I do that, let me just show you the changes didn't stick. So we'll do questions dot drop na in place equals true. And then there we go.
99 questions. Cool. So now we have our questions data set and our um, uh, unpivoted data set. So the questions data set has a question and a question plus sub question. We're going to join these two data sets together like this, basically to correlate every question plus sub question with its original question. So for example, question 29 had apparently Wow, 14 different responses you could have given. What was the original question? That's what we want to know. So let us do a join. So there is a join method in pandas, um, but I've never, so I've used it before, but I was I watched this YouTube video um, a couple of months back when I was learning Python. Um, and the guy over there recommended that you just stick to something called the merge method. I'm not 100% sure why. If someone knows, leave it in the comment section. Um, but that's what we're going to use. I was told that's a best practice, and it's worked out just fine for me. So we're going to do data set. Uh, we'll call it merged equals uh, pd.merge. Uh, and I use this method all the time, so I, I memorized the important arguments. Your left-hand data set, your right-hand data set, how you actually want to um, uh, join the data or merge the data. Left on, so what columns from the left-hand side are you going to use? And then right on, uh, what columns from the right-hand side are you going to use? So the left-hand data set, um, so as a matter of practice, I always like to make this my primary data set, um, the data set, data set I like really care about um, that has like the primary information in it. So that's going to be this data set over here the new uh, melted data set that we created. So data set melted. Yeah, as you can see, my code completion is not working for some reason. Um, I should probably fix that. Right, the right hand data set is going to be this questions one over here. And I want to do a, um, well, let's go start with the left hand join. I believe that's what I want to do. And uh, th there are different types of joins and everything. So a left-hand join, what it'll do is it'll keep every single value from the left-hand side and then find every matching value from the right-hand side and attach it. Um, you have an inner join, which will take uh, both sets of data and just find what matches between them and drop everything else. And then a right-hand join does the exact opposite thing of a left-hand join. Um, I never use right-hand joins. I If I need to do that, I will make that right-hand data set my uh, left data set. And it is just a matter of uh, practice for me. That way, whenever anyone reads my code, they know, oh yeah, you know, he does not use right-hand joins. This is, you know, he always just uses left-hand joins. So we want to join on the column called question plus sub-question. That's what I want to match. And if anyone's interested, I can make a video on um, what I call like, I guess what, I, what could be called like primary data skills. Um, things like, you know, unions, joins, stuff like that. Stuff that like, once you understand this, then um, it's just a matter of understanding how to do it in different um, uh, languages, um, like in SQL, R, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and one major problem that you can run into whenever you're uh, joining data is duplicating columns. So for example, if question plus sub-question was uh, repeated more than once, um, then what it would try and do is it would try and match every instance of question plus sub-question with every matching instance on the left-hand side, and that'll duplicate your columns. And that's something you really have to check for whenever you are um, uh, combining your data. So what I always do whenever I join data is I try and determine how many rows do I need to have at the end of, uh, at the end of this join. Um, and if it doesn't match, then there's a problem with my join. Uh, and it's very important that you do this because this is the easiest thing to make a mistake with um, when you're doing data analysis. So I want uh, 17,028 rows because literally, literally all I want to do is I want to add a column that says question that has all the questions on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the um, length of the data set uh, melted data, uh, data frame. So we'll call this uh, original data, comma, and then let's print something else. I want to print the length in Python. That's just len. You can find the length of any iterator. Um, in this case, len will give the uh, number of columns, or sorry, number of rows in a data set. Um, a good question is how do you how do you get the number of columns in a data set? I, I actually don't know. Um, something I'd have to look up. 
length of data set melted. Then I want to print the length of, so uh, let's see, merged data. And then that'll just be the length of data set merged. And then I just want to look at the data set too. So let's run that. And it looks like original data, merged data, they're the exact same length. So I got exactly what I needed. And you'll see we have all of our normal columns and then answer question. Perfect. Okay, so uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to um, know how many people answered a question for a given question because not everyone participated in, in the question. Um, and we want to add that as a new row. So we're going to be doing something called an aggregation. So what we need to do is we need to group our data by this question column. Um, and then for question one, how many people answered? For question two, how many people answered? Pandas makes this super easy. So what do I want? I want, um, and I really, I, I probably should have done this earlier, but this will help me illustrate what I want. I want to know for a given question, how many people responded to it? So uh, if I have like Q1, one, Q1, um, Q2, Q2. What I want this, so this is our format right now. Uh, these are the answers, these are the questions. I wanna know how many people answered question one and how many people answered question two. So I need to transform this into this. So. Only one person answered question one, and all three people answered question question two. So that's what I want to change it into. So basically, take this, you know, this over here, as you can see over here, all these response, a uh, question one response, and then collapse them. In or sorry, all these question, you know, one question thirty, and then collapse them into just one value. So we are going to create a new data frame. And then we're going to join that to our data. So let's first create that new data frame. Pandas makes it super easy. Uh, we just need to do dataset.merged. Oh, wait, sorry, dataset underscore merged um, dot group by. Group by parentheses. I want to group by the questions column. So just type in question. Uh, and if you have multiple things you want to group by, then what you would do is you would put in a list as usual. So I would do it like that and then like, you know, like that. But we only want to group by one. And then what column do I want to aggregate? Um, so I have the columns I want to group by and the columns I want to aggregate. And then how do I want to aggregate that data? So aggregating is basically like um, taking the sum of a bunch of data, or in this case, taking the count of a bunch of data. So what column do I want to aggregate? Um, I know I want to group by question. I want to aggregate by answer. How many people actually answer the question? Dot n unique. So n unique literally just means number of uniques. Sorry, that comes later. I do not need it. I do not need that right now. Dot count. Um, and this will just give me the count of people that, you know, did what we expected. So oh, and you'll see that it comes out in this funky format. Whenever you see this, just type in dot re reset underscore index and you'll get a data frame again. So it looks like we have some weird answers over there. And this is probably caused by um, the, oh, you know what? Here's a mistake. We don't actually want to calculate the number of answers. We want to calculate the number of um, respondent IDs and find the number of unique respondent IDs because one respondent ID is one person and we want to know how many uh, respondents answered a question. So, and then we do, we do want to know the number of unique uh, respondent IDs because for a given question, they could have given multiple answers, um, but I only want to count them once. So let's try that again. And it looks like we have 198 for every single value. Now, this is where, you know, it's very important to always run your sanity checks. Does this make sense? So let's open up our data. 
Well, I can tell right here, it's obvious not everyone answered every question. These respondents over here didn't answer question number three. So what's the problem here? Well, what it's doing is that it's counting, um, uh, it's counting the null values, the NANs. So what we can do is we can say, um, what we'll call respondents equals data set merged um, dot drop NA. Yeah, data set merged dot drop NA. I believe that should give us what we needed. Um, and then just do that and then group that. Oh, uh, my mistake. So when uh, when I said data set merge dot drop na, uh, what it did is it literally looked for an na in any value in the column, um, and then dropped that entire row if, if there was if there were any nas on that row at all. Um, so what we actually want to do over here is we will want to drop. We want to drop whenever the answer is na. That's what we want to drop. So what we'll actually do is we'll do data set merged and then specify the column and this is how you specify columns in uh, pandas you can also use dot notation or like you can use like a, a period or a dot to specify the column but i don't like doing that because um a lot of times my columns will have spaces inside them and uh, you know this is just uh this this allows me to address those columns all right Okay, sorry, I figured it out. Um, so the mistake that I made was I tried to uh, I tried to filter on on a drop na when really what I wanted to do was I wanted to find all of the uh, answers, so all of the rows in dataset merged column answer that are not na. Um, so you'll find you know even you know even after you have you've had some experience you'll you know just completely forget how to do things sometimes. So not na. Uh, and it looks like we have 9,600 uh, rows. So that's good. That, that removes um, a large number of the rows that we had. And so data set uh, respondents is basically going to be every uh, time the answer is not null. And that's good because if it's null, it means they didn't answer the question. We don't want to include those people. Awesome. This looks a lot more accurate. So you'll see... Nothing goes above 198. Yep, 198 is the highest over there, which is which means that every single person answered question 29. Um, and the way I structured the data, that makes sense. Um, cool. Looks good, looks good. So let us assign that. And now what we want to do is we want to take this question over here and then um, merge it with uh, this question over here. That way we have this respondent ID column. Uh, and what I want to do actually is I want to, I want to rename it because when we uh, because we already have a respondent ID column in our original data set. So when we combine the two, it'll call one of them respondent ID underscore X and the other one respondent ID underscore Y. So we don't want that. Um, so what we'll do over here, we'll just do... Uh, respondents dot rename uh, columns equals and then you provide a dictionary so a dictionary is just um, a key value pair the key being the uh, original column name so we want to rename this and then the value being after that we're gonna call this um, respondents and then we want this to be in place. Cool. Perfect. All right. So let us do another merge. So for the sake of time, I'm just going to copy this over here. And then we'll call this our second merge. Um, and what do we want? Uh, we want a data set merged. We want the original data. We want um, the same 17,098 columns. So we want to make sure we don't duplicate anything. So our left-hand data set will be data set merged. 
and our right hand data set will be respondents. And we will be joining on the questions column, which is just called question, not questions. Uh, it can be a little bit annoying. I've, I've had problems joining before just because I, I accidentally forgot an S at the end of a column name. So let's see what we get over here. Original data, 17,028. Merge data, 17,028. Perfect. And it looks like we have our respondents thing at the end of the year, which makes sense. Q1, they, they should all have the same value. And then, yeah, Q30, different numbers of values. Cool. So now, um, the second to last thing that we need to do is we need to... Um, the client wanted to know how many people answered the same answer per question. Um, so what we will have to do is we will have to take the question plus sub question and then um, group it by answer and then count the number of respondent IDs per um, answer. So it'll actually be quite similar to what we did earlier uh, with just uh, one or two key differences. So again, we'll just copy our code. And then we'll call this uh, same answer. Okay. And yes, we want to make sure that the answer is not null. Um, so when they said the same answer, they they meant they didn't mean people um, not answering the questions the same way. That, that we don't want that. Um, or actually, no, my bad. We we do want that. We do want that. So. We can actually remove that. Or what I actually prefer to do is um, just add a hash over there. Uh, that way, if I ever need to add it back in, it's easy enough to add back in. Um, I prefer to comment out code. That way, um, whenever uh, – I might have to come back to it, and I'm like, I can either follow my thought process, or I can be like, oh, no, we actually need this thing in there. So same answer equals same answer dot group by question, respondent ID. Um, so actually, we need to group this by – question plus sub question and answer so you'll see for every question plus sub question and for every answer that you could have given to a question plus sub question what is the count so Let us do a list, question plus sub question, and answer. And then we'll call it, we'll rename this as same answer. And I believe that will give us what we need. Yeah, yeah, looks about right. Awesome. So basically what this is saying is that there's 688 unique answers that people could have given, which, you know, eh, that, that's about in line with what we're asking for. So let us do this one more time, one more merge, and then we'll call this dataset merge three. Uh, there we go. And then we want to make sure it has the same number of rows as dataset merge two. We'll call this same underscore answer. And we actually want to merge on two columns right now, um, question plus sub question and answer. So as always, we'll use a list. So question plus sub question Uh, and answer. Let us see what we get. Awesome. 17,028, 17,028. And, yep. Same answer. Cool. Um, and then one thing we're going to want to do over here is because um, you'll see we have these NANs over here. So what that means is basically like no one answered um, that answer for that question. Um, 
what we're going to want to do over here is we're going to want to fill those NAs, those not uh, not available or not uh, not a numbers, with uh, zero. So I'm going to do data set underscore merge underscore three. Um, same answer dot fill na and i'll fill it with zero um and i believe i need to do in place equals true do i cool awesome awesome so this is exactly what we're looking for uh and this is really close to the final data set the only other thing they need is they need these columns renamed to something um you know that makes more sense so we are going to do our lazy method of copying just like that and got to be careful over here the good thing is if i make a mistake python will let me know uh so there's one there's another there's another So now we have all these strings. Let's make sure we put commas in between them. And then make a list out of it. Or, well, wait, we were going to need a dictionary, actually, because we're going to be doing a rename. So. Let's call it a uh, output data set. So whenever I have an output, I like to call it output data set. So output equals data set underscore merge underscore three uh, dot copy output dot rename columns equals and then we'll call it um, actually we you know we won't call it because we have to write it out anyway. So we'll just copy that, paste it there. And I want to rename this first one, division, oh, whoops, division primary over here, division secondary position level. We're just gonna call that position. Generation. What gender do you identify? Oh, looks like I accidentally. There we go. Gender, tenure, and which best describes your employment type? Uh, employment type. In place equals true. Uh, and the whole in-place thing, honestly, that's just my style. Um, some people prefer to actually like assign it to that variable over and over again. Um, and that is the um, beauty and the curse of Python. There's There are so many ways to do a single thing. Um, it's actually one of the things that uh, I've heard makes Go very interesting as a language. Um, there are a very limited number of ways to do things. Uh, and that can make it easier to read code because there's only one way to do something. Awesome. Responder ID, division primary, division secondary position, generation, gender, tenure, employment type, question, sub-question, answer, question. So as you can see, we were able to take that much longer data set. Oh, and uh, let's output this, you know. Um, output dot, um, let's see, let's call it, uh, what is it again? Uh, two underscore Excel um, present working directory plus slash um, again, double backslash if you're on Windows. Uh, let's call it uh, final output uh, dot xlsx, uh, and then we'll just let it write, like make the sheet name whatever whatever it wants to. Um, what pandas will always do is it'll output this index over here, um, this like zero one two three four as a separate column. Uh, I almost never want that. So I just type in index equals false. Run it. Awesome. It looks like it created that final output over there. So let's go over here. 
cool. And that's exactly what the client asked for. Um, so in, in summary, throughout this video, I've taught you guys how to uh, import, data into, uh, import data from Excel into uh, Pandas, how to uh, rename columns, unpivot columns, which we call melting, uh, do a join, um, what else? Drop columns, uh, a couple of other things. Um, aggregate columns. Um, so this is, uh, the, the reason I wanted to go over this is because it is, I think it's really easy. Uh, and I, I think it's awesome. Like, you know, when you go on YouTube, you watch classes and you, you see, um, uh, people give you like problems and stuff that, uh, that you can like solve. It's a tremendous way to learn. Um, one thing that I re realized though, is that, uh, it is also good to like see what like actually happens in the real world. So this is a project I was pay paid real money to do. Um, I charge a certain hourly rate for my work. Um, and you know, in about an hour I was, uh, I put this together. Um, and the cool thing is now because, uh, I charge at minimum an hour, uh, if this ever needs to be done again, then I have a script that's more or less ready. And I just charge an hour, you know, um, for what might even be just like, you know, 10 to 20 minutes of work. Um, and, 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 you know, that, that, that's uh, the power of programming and the power of data analysis when you, like, know how to do this. So I wanted to show you guys this because I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to pick up skills like this um, in order to uh, make some extra cash on the side where, you know, which, you know, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, and to show you guys what a real pro or a real um, uh, job might look like. This is something that I would do on a regular basis in, like, my job at work uh, along with other stuff. But this is, like, one aspect of it. Um, so if you guys are interested in me going over my projects in the future, let me know. Um, I love to make tutorials like this. I would like to um, do it in this format where it's, you know, like very natural, very easy for me to put out um, if that is what people are interested in. So thank you guys for having such a uh, – for thank you guys for, you know, joining me, watching me do this. And uh, I really hope this was useful. If you really liked it, be sure to press subscribe, uh, like the video. It really helps me out. And it will uh, – let me know that these videos are worth making it and, and something that uh, actually do help people. Um, so have a great day, guys. Thank you.